Hi, everyone. Can you hear me? Yep, I can hear you. Does everyone hear me? Okay, great. So we have one person connecting. Okay, great. Everyone's here. So today is a small class. I separated the class because there were a lot of requests. So um, I wanted to keep the class really small because I want to get to know you guys. I'm actually going to try and hold on. turn my camera. Hold on. So this is the first time that I'm doing a, hi. <laughs> the first time I'm doing a Zoom uh, with so many people. So it, this is going to be new for me as it is for you guys too, I'm sure. So first off, I'd like you guys to introduce yourselves and tell me a bit, you know, about what you do, um, why you like watercolors, your level, like what level are you? And yeah, so let's get started with Sophia. Uh, me? It's, Sophia, it's, okay, it's you. Okay. Hello, hi. Hi. Hi everyone. I uh, actually uh, sign up for my daughter. She's nine years old. But I personally, <laughs> I personally fell in love with the watercolor and uh, maybe in the last year. And uh, we just love the viber, the, the, the unpredictableness of color, uh, watercolor. Okay. And can, can give the result. And uh, so perhaps my daughter can learn the technique. We follow you from Instagram. And there is a, a lot of uh, um, artwork that we think is amazing. Uh, technique. <laughs> yeah, so I'm sitting here with her, and uh, <laughs> she's probably the youngest. <laughs> <laughs> she's so cute. <laughs> yes. Okay, that's great. So you guys are both painting today. Uh, I'm just sitting here next to her, but uh, yeah, and uh, we're from Vancouver, Canada. So. Yay. Yeah. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so next, Gina. Hi, can you Hi. hear me? Yes, okay. I hear you. <laughs> Um, I am from Pennsylvania, mm -hmm. and I have been doing watercolor for about I don't know, five years, um, wow. on and off. But I I haven't really found like my own style yet, and I'm looking um, I don't know just to improve my skills and really see where what I can do and where I can go with it, and just like I said, find my own style and your own style and what i like to paint the most like i'm still like you're i still don't know figuring it out you're not sure yeah exactly okay. what do you paint like usually what type? Uh, i love florals okay um, they're they're probably my favorite and landscapes yes me too so, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. i'm not into like faces or you know um realistic type things I, I like loose and like yeah me too yeah. absolutely i think there's just something magical about loose and it's like i like the fact that you're not like copying what already exists you know you're kind of making it your own and that's yeah. what magic is honestly so yeah. so that's great good i'm glad we're on the same page <laughs> okay next is jane i um i'm from massachusetts Great. And I just started painting when the pandemic um, oh, <laughs> locked yeah. me in my house. <laughs> and I needed something to do, and I have played around with paints and things like that. A crafter. Okay. Um, yeah. I'm not an artist. Um, yeah. And I just enjoy it. I find it really relaxing. Okay. Um, learning all the time. Mm -hmm. And um, I've been following you for about a year, oh, Bianca, and I, I love your style and I love landscapes. I love trees and mountains okay. and hiking. <laughs> I love hiking too, it's the best. Yeah, <laughs> and, and flowers and especially leaves. Um, oh, I gravitate, really? gravitate to leaves all the time when- it's Very therapeutic to paint, I find. There's just something about them, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> so I, I always go back to leaves, I don't yeah. know why. It's fun, it's addictive. That's what it yeah. is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Relaxing too. Relaxing. Okay, great. Well, I'm very happy you're here. <laughs> and Thank you. we have Courtney. Hi. Hi. So my name's Courtney. Um, I'm from El Paso, Texas, but right now I'm living in Columbus, Georgia okay. with my husband because he's in the military. 
Okay. Um, and I liked, I do crafting, like a whole bunch of different type of crafting. I've only taken a few classes in watercoloring. Mm -hmm. um, I don't do it that often, but this sounded like a lot of fun. Oh, great. Okay, well, I'm excited to have you guys. And so I'm actually going to turn my camera now because you guys need to see what I'm doing. So just give me one second. Okay. So as you guys know, this is the painting we're going to be mimicking. And I don't like to use the word, you know, copy or replicate because as I mentioned, I think, you know, um, what's it called? Um, every painting is unique. And I think that, you know, we shouldn't copy what we see. We should take it as inspiration. So same goes for when you're looking at nature or, or when you take a photo yourself and you want to paint from it. Um, I think the most important thing is to really inspire yourself and not try to copy because that's where people get these expectations where like they want their painting to be perfect or to look exactly like the scene in front of them. And I just think that's the wrong mentality and that's also not how you're going to find your own style. So the way to do it is to kind of let loose and have fun with it and don't have expectations. That's like my number one rule when painting is just don't have expectations, just just paint and see what happens and if you don't like it you can always start over you know so don't be hard on yourself it's really about having fun and just seeing what happens so um do all of you guys have the have the supplies that i requested so i said a palette of watercolors two brushes but it doesn't have to be two if you guys have one brush that's fine i'm going to be using a size this is 14 and i think this is eight so these are my brushes I don't you could show me what you have. I'm just curious. Okay, I see Sophia has a lot of brushes. <laughs> I have a lot of brushes too. <laughs> and the size. Okay, Courtney, you have two different ones, a big one, a small one. That's perfect. Yeah, so as I mentioned, it doesn't have to be exactly these sizes. You could really because we're doing loose, it doesn't, it's not specific. So you don't have to have like a size two or a size zero. So oh, that's yeah. another great thing about loose painting is that you just go with whatever you want. Pretty much. Yeah, 14, you don't have 14. So, okay. So uh, do you guys all have watercolors, I'm assuming? Yes. You yes. Do? Okay. Do you guys have wa white watercolors? Yeah. 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 Everyone has white? Yes. Okay. Perfect. If not, that wouldn't have been a problem. I just would have had to teach two different things. <laughs> and what else? If you guys want to, I don't know if any of you use tape to tape down your painting when you're doing it. I never do, by the way. This pad actually is like bound together. I don't know if you see that. It has like sticky or I don't know what on both sides. And that's usually what I use when I'm painting, although not always. A lot of the times I use. Um, Thing. Just like like notebooks, like like this type of thing, and I don't usually tape it down. I don't know why. I, a lot of people do, but for some reason I just don't. Um, okay, and what do I want to say? So the colors we're using today are light blue. Do, all, do you guys have like a light blue? Yes. Okay, great. So light blue, a navy blue, so like an ultramarine, um, green, and then white. So. We're going to keep it simple. I'm actually going to take these out and put the palette aside just so we really focus on these four colors. So does anyone know how many layers are in this painting? Let's say five. Pardon? Five. Five. What do you think, Jane? I would say five or six. Okay, and what do you think, Sophia? Um, seven. Seven. Oh, okay, seven. and Courtney? I'd say five. Okay, you guys are all wrong. <laughs> <laughs> so this painting is actually two layers, believe it or not. Oh it's, my goodness. Yeah, so the sky is just a wash. So you paint your wash, and then you go in and you do your trees, and that's it. Sounds crazy, right? <laughs> okay. Today, you guys are going to learn how to do this, and that's really fun. <laughs> so our first exercise, do you guys know how to do um, gradients? Have you ever done gradients? Like you start with a more concentrated 
let's say blue, and then you go lighter and lighter and lighter. Have you done that? Yeah. So I suggest yeah. you practice one just to kind of see that we're on the same page. Sorry. Making a shadow there. So pick whichever color you guys want. I'll take my green. So we're going to start with a very concentrated just little squares. So usually people make these perfect squares, okay? They draw with a pencil, little square, little, like five little squares and they fill them in. Um, I like to just go for it. So we don't need the pencil, just go for it. So take your concentrated pigment and make sure you don't have too much water. You don't want it spilling out. Brush, what brush? Don't shoot your brush off. Yeah, Naya. Just test out your color to see what it looks like. And so usually I'll keep this in like a square ish shape, but I don't like to, you know, set a limit. So I just kind of go for whatever happens. Okay. Once you're done with your first one, so this is our brush, we're going to take our water and just kind of dab a little bit of the paint off. And this is going to be a gradient. So it's going to progressively get lighter and lighter. Okay. So the reason we're practicing this is because when we paint, our trees, I want you guys to kind of figure out where you like how to make the color lighter or darker. And this is how to do it. You need to know how to do this first. So it's very important. So as you can see, my second green is a lot lighter. Okay. Now we don't want that. So what we're going to do is add a little bit more green and just add it to our square. Okay, and this looks a little bit better to me. So that's how you guys should do it. Let's say if you make it too dark, that's okay. You can also wipe it away. I don't know if you guys know how to remove pigment, but I'll show you just in case, because you'll actually need to know this for the tutorial. So what I do is I take a clean brush usually. And so this is still wet, right? So I just kind of wipe off some of that paint. And so that would make the color a lot lighter. You see how cool that is? Except now we don't need that. We actually want it to be darker. So I'm going to put some more green back. I just wanted to show you guys how to do that. Okay, so we're gonna be doing about six squares, okay? That'll give us an idea of the color. So second one, same thing. So it's okay if you go in really light, if you're scared, because sometimes, you know, when I'm doing this, I get a little nervous because, you know, you want it to be very progressive. So I get, you know, I feel like I should take off more pigment because I don't want it to be too dark, but then it ends up too light. But that's no problem. You just go back into your paint, grab a little bit more, dab the excess on your paper towel, and then just add until it looks good to you. And that looks really good to me. So I'm going to leave that. And if you guys, if I'm going too fast or you guys have questions, don't be shy, okay? Just let me know. Okay, so the fourth one, same thing. I clean my brush a little. And you can see this is giving a nice gradient. Does someone have hiccups? <laughs> oh, that's my daughter. Like, <laughs> you have hiccups. It's my that's... second daughter. She's only four months old. I'm my apologies. Ah, no, that means she's growing. It's a good thing. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and one more. <laughs> And we could even do one last one, which is basically almost transparent. Yeah. I'm actually going to remove a bit of it because I find it a bit too dark. So I dab 
make sure my brush is clean and remove some of that paint. Do you guys want to show me what you did so far? Not done. Oh, excellent. Junior, you're a pro. Very good. Junior, you're a pro too. <laughs> That's excellent. Okay, great. Courtney, are you, you're still painting? Okay, good, good. You're doing very well. And Sophia and her daughter. What's your daughter's name? Sorry. I'm Sophia. Oh, you're Sophia. I'm sorry. Thought it was your mom. Okay, great. So is everyone finished this? Can we go to the next exercise? Sure. Okay, so the next exercise, we're going to be practicing the gradient wash. So that's like incorporating all this into one square, okay? So the reason we're going to practice that is because, like I mentioned, this is two layers. And our first layer, which is the sky, is just one big wash. That's all it is. So let's practice that now. I'm going to show you how to do this. So this is the blue I'm using. It's a light blue, okay? Good. You'll need a clean brush, water. And there are two ways to do that I like to do washes. So I'll show you both ways. The first way is that I create like a little puddle. Let's put a green in there. And then grab some paint. Which is size. And then I start from the top always. And then I pull it. So imagine like you're pulling a rope. It's the same concept, except you're pulling the water down. And it makes it lighter. Okay. Dark. And then if you have a little puddle there, you can always clean your brush and see, you move it that way. So now what we're going to do is add more pigment to this because right now we still, like we want much more of a gradient, right? So we want it to be highly pigmented on top and then we want to pull that down. <coughs> Make this as concentrated as you want. <coughs> So let's say if this were our sky, you could stop there if you wanted your sky to be very really light in color, or you could add more paint if you want it to be more saturated. So that's, you know, personal preference. I like the sound of the water swishing. <laughs> <laughs> it's satisfying. <laughs> okay, so I'm happy with this. Okay. That's the first way to do a gradient wash. Do you guys want me to show you the second way? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Are you guys done? Can I go to the next? Yep. Okay. So clean my brush, same thing. I don't want too much water on the brush, okay? So I'm making sure all my excess water is off my brush. This time you take, oops, sorry. This time you take your pigments first. You don't make a puddle on your page and you grab the pigment. And you, the same concept now. We pull it, it's the same thing. Same but different, right? And sorry, my paper is dirty, so just ignore that. And once you get about halfway, I suggest removing a little bit of the pigment because we do want it to get lighter and continue and keep pulling that color down. And then if you have too much blue, you just wipe it off. So, and actually this one's a little bit faster than this one, I would say. 
the reason for that is because you're starting off with highly pigmented color on your brush. So this one is a little bit faster. Surprisingly, though, I use the slow method. <laughs> And feel free to show me what you're doing and feel free to ask questions if you have any. That's good. That's really good. Which one was which? Which is your first one? This was the wet on wet. Okay. And then this was the. the second one. I really yeah. like the second one. I find it looks really cool. Yeah. Like a tie dye almost. Yeah, right? Yeah. I don't know why it's. <laughs> 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 Very good. Jane, your first one is is needs a little bit of work, I would say. But your second yeah, yeah your second one is great. Are you using um cold press watercolor paper? Yeah, I am. You are. What's the yeah. name? I'm just curious. Um I think it's Strathmore. Uh, yeah. It was this one. The blue pad? Oh, that one. Okay. Yeah, that's a that's yeah. good. That's good. Okay, great. Are you guys ready for the next step? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, you're all done? Okay, great. Okay, so now we're going to be practicing the technique used to make the foggy trees, okay? So I need a pencil. Actually, going to make some squares just to show you where we're painting. This is as if this were our frame, okay? And I'm going to make a few of them because I want us to practice this. It's going to take a bit of practice. So, make a bunch of squares. I'll make three because I only have room for three right now. And okay, so as you know, pine trees have like this triangular shape, right? Like a conic shape. So that's exactly what we're going to do. So when I paint these, I don't usually, uh, what's it called, sketch with pencil first. But if you guys need to, this is how I would do it. I would do like a cone. It's very simple. And let's do like one on this one. Here we could do two. Let's try different things, OK? And you guys don't have to do exactly the same cones that I'm doing. You could do different sizes. You could do one big, one small, or two big, whatever you want. So I would suggest exploring with this exercise, okay? And then we're gonna fill these in with paint and I'm going to show you how to get this type of, I guess I'll call it like a ripple, I don't know what to call it, ripple pattern. Uh, okay. Like a big one here, let's cut off the page. So I'm going to take my smaller brush now because these are quite little. Okay, so the way to paint these trees. First off, you have to wet your brush. You need a clean brush. Oh, mine still has green in it. Oh, look what I just did. <laughs> a little mess. Okay, and we're going to fill our square with water. Not too much water and not too little. You want this to remain wet, but you don't want like a puddle that drips. So try to keep that in mind. Okay, so I want everyone to do this on the first square and let me know when you're done with your water. And please don't, don't put too much water because it, it won't work. That's why we're practicing. So I just want to let you know first. Okay. And once everyone's done, let me know, and I'm going to show you. What I'm done. I'm done. You're all done? So done. Okay, done. okay, so now what I'm going to do, take a little bit of water, not too much. Take my green, and then you're going to make like little dots, just dots, that's it. And you're going to see how those kind of expand on your page. 
and you could play with water okay so here i don't have that much water but now i'm going to just put a little bit more and you'll see how it gets bigger look you see how cool that is so these ones are bigger let's try more let's try more water okay you get even bigger and less saturated okay so this is coming back to this exercise how much water versus how much pigment do you use and this is how you figure out do i want my trees to be highly concentrated do i want them to be less pigmented you know so this is how to do the trees now when i'm doing this one it has it has the background so that's why i use the white paint okay another way to have done this is to remove the excess paint in between so like let's say i had blue here because i had done the sky i would clean my brush and like i showed you before wipe it away and clean it and wipe okay so if you guys don't mind i'd like to see your first tree and if you have any questions or if you're having trouble that's totally normal i mean you guys have never done this probably so i didn't do that like i did that but I did it all together. Like I didn't put separation in between. So you see, Gina, that, Gina, I think that's great because that means that you're kind of taking your own approach to it and that's what's good. Okay. Very good, Sophia. Very good. Very good, Jane. You guys all did really, really great. Very good, Courtney. And you see, Courtney, on the left, bottom left, your page wasn't wet so much, right? So you could see like a dot, but that actually looks nice. It gives it a look. And that's actually something that I use in this painting at the bottom here. Just okay. This color. So it's great. See, I, Gina, that's a good comment that you made because it just it makes me understand that like people always think that you need to do exactly what is shown, but in mm -hmm. fact, no. You use it as inspiration, and then you create as you create. You see, I want like I want you guys to be the creators. Yeah. Okay. So let's try again. Now we're going to do two trees. Make this a little harder and mix some colors together, or do you guys want to stick to green? We can mix. Okay, let's mix. Because this has, um, it has navy and green inside. It's like a mix of both. So that's what we're going to do now. Yeah. Don't be scared to mix up your colors. I always encourage it. I know a lot of artists don't like to do that, but I like to make a mess when I paint because that's where the fun happens for me. Okay. So I took my green, now I'm taking blue. I'm just mixing both. If you have a palette now, that would be great. So I don't have one. I'm just going on my paper towel to see what the color is. So I like this. This is like a deep green. I really like that. And I'll, I'm going to do the exact same thing. Ooh. And make sure to leave space between your little dots because that's going to be the smooth. And now for the second one, let's say I want it to be a lighter green. So I'll put a bit more of this green. Same thing. Just dab your color. Okay, and now to make this exercise a little bit harder, are you guys done this part or not yet? Good. I'll just wait a few minutes. Oof. 
So my square is still wet and that's good because we want to work on this. Um, like I mentioned, it's one layer, so we, we're not going to add more water, but I do want to add more depth this time. Okay. So here we only did one dot. Okay. Here I want to add more depth. So I'm going to add more pigment. So like, like on the painting, you could see where it, it was lighter here and then it's darker. It's darker because I went back in a second time or even third time with more pigment. It was the same water though. I didn't do another wash. So let's try that out on these trees. And feel free to play with your color. So I'm adding way more blue now. Actually, this is, you see, this is kind of too dry now. So it's not making the perfect effect I want, but it's good enough to explain to you guys how to do it. Where are you? And let me know when you guys are done and we'll do the last one. And you could also show me what you've done so I can see. Good. It looks really good. And I like your green. Thank you. I think I used way too much water. Hold on, I just need to change the, I'm putting gallery view. Um, Jane, so yeah. you see, I don't think you use too much water because I think it looks beautiful actually. I really like that. Really? I really like it. Can you imagine if you did that on like a big canvas, it would look beautiful. It would look very like washed out. So mm -hmm. I wouldn't, I wouldn't be too hard on yourself. I would maybe even i would explore that if i were you and see what i could do with that so, okay so let's try are you guys ready for the third one we're going to do the same thing except now we're playing with mixing the colors okay because i want you guys to get comfortable with that And you could even try adding more water to see what happens, okay? I'm gonna do that for the last one, just to show you guys. So this is more water than what I added to base one. Oh, shoot. <laughs> so I'm grabbing some green. Okay, and you're going to see what happens. It's going to blossom. And that's because I put much more water this time. So you can play with that in your painting also. Another thing you could do is go take your brush, which already has the pigment, dab it in your water gently, and then you'll see that they blossom even more. And I like using the word blossom because it makes me think of flowers. <laughs> this kind of looks like a blossom though so you'll see when this dries um jane it's going to look a little bit like yours <laughs> but that's beautiful you see that's that's the magic of watercolors to me at least i think that's the incredible thing about it is that it comes out a little bit unexpected Hmm. 
Who's got the baby? Uh, Zoya. Zoya. Hey, you want to say hello? <laughs> Who? I'm sorry. Sophia? Yeah. Oh. oh. <laughs> wow. She speaks. Oh. Look at you. <laughs> <laughs> She likes getting attention. Uh, yeah, I see that. <laughs> Cute. She's adorable. Okay, we can do a last experiment on the last one. Just put some blue. Let's see what happens, okay? Just for fun. Wow, look at that. See? This is the magic of watercolors. And you don't have to put your dots all over, right? You can also like play, like put a bit to the left here, maybe oh. one dot here, maybe one there. You can do it. You can do however, you know, whatever you want to do. Okay, so when you guys are done that, we're going to go on to our last exercise before we start the final painting. So can you guess what the last exercise is going to be? <laughs> Lifting? Um, no, actually. So the last exercise, but that's a good one. <laughs> we will be doing a little bit of um probably in the painting when we get there because i think you guys kind of know how do you guys all know how to lift pigment i mean i showed you right pretty much yeah yeah you know yeah. i mean we could practice if you guys want it's no problem um so yes the last exercise will be these squares again however this time we're going to do our sky wash first and then we're going to do the trees it's going to be our two layers kind of to practice in a small sketch format so you guys have an idea of where to go once we on the bigger paper. So, um, excuse my knife, but this is how I <laughs> remove the sheet. Otherwise I find they break. This time we're just going to do two squares to practice. That's all we need. Really nice things. I know, I know. Are there any questions, by the way? No? You guys are awesome students. <laughs> You're an awesome teacher. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Okay, so as we did in this in the first, I mean, second exercise, we will be doing a wash first. So you guys can use whichever technique you preferred, if you prefer doing the water first and then the pigment, or if you prefer doing the pigment and then pulling, use whichever technique you are more comfortable with, okay? I'm going to do the water. So if you're, by the way, if your water is really dirty, you can clean that. You can go get new water. Mine is not so bad, so I'm still going to use it. And maybe make your square a little bigger. This is kind of small, but yeah, it'll work. Start at the top, and then once again, you see, I have a lot of pigment here. So what I'm going to do is clean off my brush a little bit, actually a lot, a little bit. And then I'm going to continue pulling like I showed you. And that's great. I like the way that looks. So I'm just going to leave it. 
And I just realized we didn't we didn't draw the uh, triangles. Do you guys think you'll be able to make the pine trees regardless of the sketch? <laughs> you have an idea of how to do it, right? Yeah. Okay, great. That's also something great to practice is to practice not having to sketch when painting. It takes away some of the pressure also, I find when you paint. So we're going to do the same thing now. We're going to add, let's add just one tree. And you can put that wherever on your page. So like I showed you, just make your dots. This is a big tree, so it's gonna come off the page. Okay, clean your brush a little bit and I'm going to grab blue because this will give it some depth. And actually, we are going to practice lifting pigment. That was a good idea. So like, um, pardon, what, what am I saying? So here, yeah, we have the blue sky. So we're going to remove that in our brush. And make sure your brush is not too wet because you don't want to mess with the colors too much. And we're going to lift the pigment. So just push gently but firmly on your paper and wipe it off. So you keep doing this until you're satisfied. Okay, I'm going in, removing, going back in until I'm happy with the white that shows. And at this point, we can add some of our, okay? So that's gonna represent the snow. You don't have to though, this can work too. This can look like snow. I just like the effect of the white blooming on the paper. So, and like I mentioned, when we're going to paint the bigger painting, we're gonna have to work really fast because this dries quickly. And since it's two layers, you kind of just have to attack, you know? You don't have that much time to think. So this is already quite dry, so it's not blooming as nicely as I'd want. And then you can always go back in and add a bit of detail, just kind of play with your brush. Just playful movements. So when you guys are finished, I'd love to see. Nice. I really like your sky. It turned out really great. Gina, that's really nice. Thank you. I love it. Excellent, Jane. Excellent. Thank I really you. like I really like that you put a lot of depth to it. You added a lot of pigment and that makes it pop. So I yeah. really And Sophia, how's it going? Good. Good? You want to show me? 
I'm not done yet. Oh, you're not done. Okay. We'll give you a few more minutes. So we're going to do the same thing with this one. This time, let's put the tree in the middle, okay? The same thing, we're going to practice our sky. We're basically practicing the whole painting right now. Remember, you need to work fast because your water does dry quickly. I'm actually going to leave this one as is. I like the way it turned out. So I'm not adding more blue to it. And without letting it dry too much, grab your green and your blue and start painting your tree in the center. And if you want to add more depth to that, you can add a little more blue to some of your needles. Right here, here, and here. And then grab your white. I know I might be going fast, but that's because um, it dries quickly, and that's the only reason. So. This is something that, you know, it might require a few times of you practicing and that's okay. You might not get it the first time. So as long as you understand the technique, you can practice. So you see, this is still very wet and that's awesome. So I'm gonna add my white now and bloom nicely. And as you can see, the white is kind of taking over the green here. Oh, my white is too. Yours did too? Yeah, it's like yeah. going, spreading that's, like crazy in it. That's great. So that's that's fun, you know, yeah. that's fun. So now you take your blue and you just go over the white. It's like you're teaching it a lesson. Like, no, okay. you're not taking over my tree. No. <laughs> <laughs> my tree. Yeah. And that's it. Uh, a few more dots. Is it like the water or is it actual white? The white color. Let me add it. See? Wow. Oh, well, I should. Can okay, okay. I get to the second one? Ooh. And there you go. I'm happy with this, so I'm just going to leave it. But you see what I mean by not having expectations? Both these trees are very, very different. Hmm. And that's going to happen to you guys too. If you guys paint this 50 times, each painting will be completely different. Once you guys are done with this, we're going to start the final painting. Mm -hmm. so let, let me know. Yeah, this is in mine. That's great. You're doing very good. Very good, Sophia. No, I'm not too different. Good. I like it. I like your white. It really pops up. I find it so cool how everyone has a different result. You see, that's what's nice. So let me know when everyone's done and we're going to start the final painting. Okay.
Almost. Almost done? Mm -hmm. You're done. done. No, you're done. I'm done, too. Done. Everyone's done? Yeah. Oh, you guys are great. Okay. So now grab your eight by eight or did I say eight or seven? I don't remember. Eight. Eight. So yes, this is eight by eight. And so we're gonna incorporate all these techniques that we just learned. So remember what they are, the wash for the sky, how to, you know, water down your pigment to make it either more concentrated or less concentrated. And then the bloom effect for your trees. And then, you know, just putting all that together and this is your final painting, except now we're gonna paint big. So let's get started. We're going to grab our big brush for this. If you guys have a big brush, grab it. Make sure your brush is fairly clean. It doesn't need to be perfect because we're adding blue. So if it's if it has a bit of green like mine, that's not so it's not a problem. Okay, and as you guys can see, there's no frame to this, right? I didn't draw a square. I just kind of go in and just swish water around. So that's how you do it. So I'm just gonna show you how to do that. Just loosely go in and as if you're coloring the page, but with water. And so you want your paper to be wet enough because we got to do the sky now and the trees. So that's a lot of work. Okay, once you're happy with this, I just want to show you guys how much water I have. Can you kind of see the shine a little bit? Look yeah. Like yeah. A bit of puddle. That's good because we need to fill the blue and then we need to do the trees. So. Let's grab our blue. And just like I showed you, same thing. Just pull your pigment down. Pull it. And you can also tilt your paper if you want. So you can tilt it downwards and you see how it just goes down? And you can tilt it to the side. Whoops. If it drips, that's okay. You just wipe it off. It's not a problem. Okay, and I'm going to add a bit more blue because I want it to be more concentrated on top. Okay. Is everyone done with their sky? Yes. Excellent. So your paper is still wet. That's great. Now we're going to do the blooming part. So, okay. I'm going to do two trees on this. Okay. You guys can do as many or as little trees as you want. You don't have to do exactly what I'm doing. Like I mentioned, this isn't about copying. It's about understanding how I do it and then making it your own. Okay. So I'll be doing two trees. Do you start with a lighter green first? Yes, I do. Yes, good question. I do start with the lighter green and then I go in with the darker. Okay. So this is my light. And dab your colors the way we did, just randomly, and leave space in between because that's your snow. And same thing here. This is my second tree. Okay, and now I'm going in with some blue. So I'm giving it some depth. And you can play around with that. So if you know, like now I'm adding much more blue and you'll see how that looks darker. So how fun is that? Mixing your colors. Okay. 
And it doesn't have to be the same everywhere. So you can add, you know, a lot of green on one corner and none on the other, just to give it a more like natural look. Right, because in nature, nothing's perfect. It's never completely the same. So I actually happen to have a lot of water on this painting. I'm going to remove some of that because it's puddling up at the bottom here. I don't know if you see that. There's like too much. So that's okay. You just grab it, wipe it off. You do want some of it, so that's enough. That's perfect. Okay, and now we're going to go in with our white. So make sure your brush is clean for this. And again, I know this is fast, but that's because it's the only way to paint this. <laughs> I wish I, I could teach you in a slower way, but there is no other way. So grab your white. <laughs> but I think once you guys understand the technique, you can practice it, you know? So. <laughs> the same as we did before. And look how your white blooms. It's really, really nice. Add your white in between. And have fun with this. Don't like, you know, like, don't be shy to put like a dot here, let's say, or here. Like, just have fun with it because that's how you're going to have a great result. Okay, so I'm happy with this so far. Now I'm going to add even more depth. So I'm going to grab my blue and my green. By the way, look at my hands. This is like a disaster. <laughs> and oh, I forgot to clean my brush. So remove the white first. If you have white on your brush, clean it. Now grab your blue. On the green, and then we already did add more detail. And by detail, I mean more dots, basically. So this is what's going to make your painting pop. See how this is starting to pop now? As I add my dots, it's like it's coming to life. And you can make a few little lines too. They'll look like branches. Okay, and then remember how on the bottom I had this, this effect? So we're going to do that. We're just going to pull it out of the, you know, the water square that we made. We're going to pull some of that out as if the branches go beyond the painting. And blend that in. Add some more green if you want to. I think mine needs green here, so I'm adding it. What's happening? I'm painting. Same thing here. Don't be scared to go out of your canvas and add detail. Oh, it's just making a cactus. It's a tree. It's just a tree. So you can even add some in different areas. It doesn't just have to be at the bottom. 
going back in with some lighter green and still adding more details. So what's fun about these trees is that you stop when you feel like stopping. Mm -hmm. Like I could keep going and make this really, really, you know, more detailed and darker. I want to call. Thank you. Thank you. At a certain point though, you just say I'm stopping. Otherwise you keep, you can keep on going forever. So you also need to figure out when to stop. So I think I'm about finished where I am. I think I'm happy with this. How's everyone doing? Good. Good. Is it working out? Mm. <laughs> Don't worry if it's not perfect, if you're not thrilled with it, you yeah. now know the technique and you can practice. And if you guys want, you can send me, like, if you want to practice this again, you can send me pictures on Instagram. You can ask me any questions. So I think the difficulty with this painting is that you do need to work fast. And that's something that requires a bit of practice, but anyone can get there. I mean, I started off as a beginner too, so. <laughs> <laughs> How long have you been painting? Um, I've been painting watercolors for about four years, I'd say. But as a as a child, I always painted with acrylics. So I'd say I'd, I've done acrylics for about, I don't know fifteen years or so before I did oh. watercolors. But they're you know they're two very very different mediums. Like they're completely opposite. Yeah. So when I started watercolors, I was like a brand new like like anyone like someone starting any skill because it's so different there's so many you know t techniques that you don't use with acrylics ever and this the whole concept of water is very it's very unique you know and it's something that requires a lot of practice so that's all it's about it's just about trial and error and understanding that's how much water nice. versus how much pigment you need to create the effects you're looking for once you have that down, you can really do anything with it. And you see, I'm still adding little dots because I look at it and then I see something like, oh, I think I need a bit of color here. So you guys can do that too. Until you feel satisfied. And if you don't, you can always try again, right? Everyone has more paper here, I'm sure. I like the way my practice one turned out better. <laughs> it looks good though. Nice. You did good. You did really good. Really? Yeah. It's excellent. Thank you. Yeah. But like the one I like the one that I did it had a softer look to it want the practice one uh -huh. like like that one I like okay yeah what so I think, think I think in that one you used more water and less pigment okay and I think yeah I think your paper was more wet uh, in the practice one I think so yeah in the practice one because it yeah. looks like it's yeah it looks like it bled out a lot more yeah so I think it's you like used more soft yeah, I like that. More one. water. In the second one, your paper was drying, and that's why you have like more detail. 
So okay. Here I have more detail. That's because it was dry and I added it, but I wanted that effect, you know? Yeah. If yeah, yeah. what you're looking for, if you want something a lot yeah. loose, then, then yeah, just work with the water. And once it's dry, that's it. You can't go back in. Yeah, I like that look. Yeah. Jane, how are you doing? Um, it's good. You can remove some pigment. I suggest you remove some pigment where the snow yeah. is. So I would wet my brush a little bit, clean it off, and then remove. Wait a second. Okay. Second. I'm going to give you a bit just to show you. Take your brush. And then go in and pull some of that out. You can even go into the tree. Let's say if I wanted this to be like a sharp edge, you could go in and pull it this way. You see, that's the great thing about watercolors is that you can you can edit it almost any way you want. I'm done. You're done? Let's see, Sophia. Oh, very cute. I love it. Did you oh, make Christmas stuff? Uh, Christmas yeah. Party? It's so nice. <laughs> it's so nice. And I liked your background, too. It was really nice. Thank you. You're welcome. So guys, look how different these are, just to show you that no two paintings are ever the same. <laughs> They're all unique, and that's what you need to explore. You need to explore just letting go when you paint. And this is still changing because it's still wet. So as it dries, it changes. How's it going? Pretty good. Good. Guys, don't be so hard on yourselves. <laughs> Everyone's like so hard on themselves. We're all concentrating. Yeah, you're very focused. <laughs> okay, mine has turned into a completely oh, different baby. Cute puppy. <laughs> wow, he's just, oh, is it a girl oh. or a boy? Puppy! <laughs> so cute. He's supposed to be in bed, but you know how that works. <laughs> Jane, I like that you're drinking a glass of, what is that? <laughs> oh, wine. Nice. Yeah. That's a big glass. <laughs> Enjoy it. Cheers. A child, a child can go. go. Mm-hmm. 
When you were painting your trees, did you use the smaller brush or the larger one? Um, I believe I used the, the larger one. So usually I'll, I'll use a large one for like the big uh, blooms and then I'll go in with the smaller tip for the little details. Mm -hmm. But not necessarily. Sometimes like this tip is really, really good on this large brush. So mm -hmm. I'm not even sure, but I think I only use the large brush. I'm not okay. sure. That just goes to show you that it doesn't matter, right? Yeah. That's why I told you guys, it doesn't matter. If you only have one brush, you can do this. Do you think you'll do more Zoom classes now? Um, yeah, if you guys like it, then yeah, for sure. <laughs> yeah. I love it. Good. Yeah. I'm really happy. If you have any requests for what you'd like to learn next, I mean, I could always plan a, a second class. I mean, I'm always down for florals. <laughs> yeah, for sure. I, I just I love florals and landscapes. You can't, I, I, can't love them. Them. I can show you some of the landscapes I have here. I don't have florals right now. Yeah. Oh, that's gorgeous. Thank you. Uh, hey, oh, I love that. That like loose landscape look. I love that. This one you guys probably saw. I posted it recently. Yes. Okay. Maybe we could do this next if you guys want. Yes. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Okay. I like that. Okay. So we could do this and then maybe I'll plan a floral one also. Oh, yeah. Good. Let me check if I have some florals to show you guys. <laughs> I don't know what, lately I've been painting a lot of trees. I don't know why. They're addictive. They are addictive, yeah. And I'm also kind of in the forest now, so maybe that's why. Yeah. <laughs> no, I don't have flowers right now. I do have some just like fun gouache. That I was doing. Ooh. You guys want to learn gouache too? That's something else that I love. I think it's the, yeah. one of the greater paintings. Would you guys like it to be earlier next time, or did you like this time? No, this was perfect for this me. Perfect. Yeah, this is good. Okay. Yeah, I like it. Good, good. Because it's hard because everyone has different schedules, so that's good. Mm -hmm. That's the issue. And I know everyone lives in, in different time zones too, so it makes it even harder. Is this the first time you've taught a class? No, no, but this is the first oh. time I've done like a group Zoom class. Oh, okay. I've only ever done individual classes. So how did I do? <laughs> awesome. Good. Very good. Very Thank good. Thank you. Thank you. I definitely enjoyed it. It's nice because like you don't have to go out, but you can still like be with other people and learn something. That's so right. yeah, and it's an activity to do. And yeah, yeah. we can't be together now, but at least we can do this together. So that yeah. makes it, that makes it fun. And I had a lot of fun with you guys. I'm really happy that we did this. Um, yeah, it's fun. Yeah. I have to say, I, I was nervous though. <laughs> I was too. Like, even yeah. I can't even imagine being the teacher because I was <laughs> being the student. I told my husband, I'm like, I have butterflies in my stomach. Yeah. <laughs> I like butterflies all day. Like, I've been like focused on this and like how exactly yeah. I'm going to teach it. And <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Definitely the highlight of my day. <laughs> oh, good. I'm really happy. Mine too, actually, <laughs> for sure. Oh, and don't forget to sign your paintings also. I know a lot of people, like me, I always forget, but you should sign your paintings. Oh, wow, you're back here again. Jane, you're, you're finished? I am. It Let's turned, see. it's in a totally different tree. Is it? Oh, yeah. I love it though. I love it. It looks like soft, you know? The branches look soft. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> it's my own style. I can tell that you don't like it, but I like it. So 
Sorry. Well, see, I wanted it to look more like yours. I know, but you know, that's the problem is that you should try and develop your own style. Like I'm giving you the tools to do it, but once you figure out your own style, you're going to see that like, why would, why did I want it to look like hers? You know, because yeah. I, you're going to realize that you also have a gift. Everyone has the gift to create something unique that's their own. So I think that's what I've been trying to find too, because it, I'm not satisfied. You're not you know? satisfied, but the only way is to keep going. And like I said, don't be hard on yourself. Don't like, don't criticize yourself. It's, there's no point to that. I think you're doing really great. And I think you have a lot of potential. You just need to keep, you need to keep exploring. That's all. It's like anything. Yeah. It's new. It's new. <laughs> that's it. So yeah. You gotta keep going and, and I'm sure you'll figure something out. I'm not worried. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I'm saying hi to you. <laughs> hi. So cute. What's your name? My name's Lawson. Walton? Lawson. 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 Nice name. Nice name. Yeah. How old are you? Are you 15? I'm six. You're six. Yeah. I thought you were 15. I'm definitely not 15. Mm -hmm. I would look way bigger. <laughs> what are you doing? He might listen better, too. If he was... <laughs> no. no. <laughs> I'll say my name and play Fortnite. That's it. Courtney, how did it go? I see part of it. Oh God! Oh, it's no. so cute. Uh, I just want to hug your I want to hug them. They look really cozy. <laughs> <laughs> see, I love this. Everyone has a different result. I think that's what's so amazing. Really good. So, are there any questions or anything you could ask? No. Is everyone on lockdown? Mm -hmm. We no? should be, but we're not. Oh, wow. Really? <laughs> yeah. Where do you live? Pennsylvania. Oh. Yeah, it's really bad around here. Oh. But they're not, they're not locking. The kids still going to school? Yeah. They started back on in hybrid. Oh, okay. So they go, they're going, it depends on the schools. Like my kids are going two days a week, but then my nephew is going every day full time. Oh. Yeah. So crazy. scary. It really is. I stopped working like, hmm. yeah. Cause I'm a hairstylist and I was around people all the time and you can't yeah. like social distance doing that. Yeah. So Oh my god. Yeah, that's risky. Where's the aunt? I see we're in Montreal where I live, we're on complete lockdown. Everything's closed and we have an 8 p.m. curfew, which is really crazy. yeah. If you're out after 8 p.m., you get fined between a thousand and six thousand. Oh. oh my goodness. Oh my so strict. It's like it's really it's gotten very scary, honestly. So now are the people like protesting that and going crazy some people, like yeah some people are a lot of people are understanding but a lot of people are really upset and they think you know the government's controlling us and blah 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 i mean that's what we're going through that's yeah. what that's exactly what personally i understand it i think like we need to get rid of this once and for all Me too. You know? we need to just yeah. it. and we need the vaccine asap uh, yeah that's, yeah. The, that's the real issue is that it's taking it, a lot of time I know. Anyways, yep. we'll cross our fingers and hope for the best, obviously. Yep. Yeah. That's why this is so good. Yeah, that that's why Zoom is like good. This. Yeah. yeah. And it's nice to talk to people and see people too, because I also don't really see anyone. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, this is nice. 
right? Yeah. I feel like I'm not in my house right now. Like I'm somewhere else. <laughs> I know. It, I would feel that same way too if I didn't have him behind me. <laughs> <laughs> Brings me right back to reality. <laughs> One day I'd like to do like a live workshop somewhere in the world. I don't know. Everyone lives probably yeah. in the States. Yeah. I think that would be a road lot. trip. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I would go. Yeah. I'd definitely go. Where should I do it? Which state? New York is always a good one. That's true. Yeah, but you don't want to go to New York right now. Oh, no, no. <laughs> We're talking like way after the pandemic. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> like in two years. <laughs> New York or Philadelphia, big cities are nice because like there's always a way to get to them, you know? Yeah. Yeah. You can come to Boston and stay at my house. <laughs> Thank Boston's you. good too. Boston's a good place. That's a big city. Yeah. yeah. I'm the fastest person on earth. Looking <laughs> good. Okay. Okay. Bernie, you're practicing? I tried doing it again the other way, like to get it the other way, but it didn't. And I thought maybe because it was different paper, but it's still. You know, it could be the paper too. What paper are you using? So the first one was arches, and then the one that I, turned out that I actually liked it was the Stonehenge. Well, not that I like them all, but like the one that I really liked was, oh. uh, was the yeah. Stonehenge. It's interesting how different paper reacts differently. I'm using this one as art philosophy. Actually, wait, I can't. Hold on. Why, why are you in bed? <laughs> this one is art philosophy, the one I've been using. Mm -hmm. um, so this one is Legion. So you could see, yeah. I don't know how to hold the cap, <laughs> the picture. You could see it's it's slightly different. Yeah. The Legion is like, is not as grainy, I would say. The, yeah. The philosophy is much more grainy. Yeah. Yeah, I really didn't like my paper at all. It got really mushy. Oh, it got mushy? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so I don't I like would the suggest, paper. I would suggest one of these brands that I use. These are my favorite yeah. brands all the time. Also, Arches is definitely excellent. I mean, not yeah. I actually, I'm liking the, the Stonehenge better, and it's a little bit cheaper, I think, than the Arches. It's, oh, yeah, it's much cheaper. For and sure. it's really nice. It's nice. It's nice, and it turns, like, your paintings will dry very nicely on it. Yeah. Yeah. I've never seen that. In a, where do you buy that? Amazon. Amazon, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, I got mine from Amazon. Probably your local art store if you can order online, but I would I would probably buy it on Amazon. Amazon you can trust. Yeah. Especially now with everything. Do you like hot press paper? Have you used that? Um, so I don't really use it much. You know, it's funny because I was thinking I need to explore it because I've been so just like addicted to cold press that I haven't really gone to hot press. But I do want to I do want to try it out and kind of explore more on it. I really I just started using it and I did a couple paintings like florals with it. And I am surprised at how let me say at how nice like you can see um, the watercolor, like, like the blooms, and like, I mean, I like blooms in watercolor. I know a lot of artists don't, but I feel like it's what makes watercolor watercolor. And like this, that's gorgeous. Like, it had like it, nice. that's hot press. And see how you can like, yeah. I don't know. It's just, it looks like much smoother. That's it. Yeah. It has like a delicacy to it. Yeah. Yeah, it's it is. It's a lot smoother, and you see more of the. Um, I mean, it's a lot less forgiving. That's but, it. You see more of the mistakes, and notice I go mistakes because yeah. they're, they're not mistakes. Right. Like I, <laughs> that's that's the beauty of the watercolor. That's it. Yeah, I'm like really liking hot pressed paper right now. Yeah. You're making me want to try it again. You should try it. <laughs> I, I just bought like a big sheet of it of arches hot press and and like ripped it into pieces yeah, into and then tape them into my um, journal so yeah. that it, you know, like tip ins. Yeah. So that at different pages. And That's it takes like the pressure off of making a perfect like painting, you know? That's it. That's it. Yeah. yeah. That's really great. Okay. I got to go. 
Okay. Okay. Well, thank you very much for being here. And everyone's no one has questions. I'll go too. Or does yeah, you guys have any good. questions? Yep. Yeah, good. Good. Great. Thank you. Okay. It was wonderful. Awesome. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye. Bye, everybody. Bye. 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 Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye